Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Roland. The program is called Shedding Shackles. That's how I begin all my radio programs. Shedding Shackles is my new theme. And I think it's very appropriate. We all need to shed the shackles of the past. Shed the shackles of uh, out of control emotions, hurt feelings, negative thoughts, unhappy memories, okay, resentments. See, if you look, let's put it very, I'll tell you a story. Um, there was a nice uh, man, grandfather, who was uh, in Hawaii on the beach with his uh, granddaughter. And he was watching his granddaughter play. And he wasn't that old either, I don't know, 40 something, maybe. Not a, an old man at all. And he was watching his granddaughter play. And he asked himself, he said, what's the difference between her and me? His granddaughter was happy, carefree, full of life, full of brightness, full of joy, okay? He said, what's the difference between her and me? And he pondered that question. Finally, the answer came to him. You know what he found? The difference between his granddaughter and him was one thing, resentment. He was resentful, she wasn't, okay? So what's the difference between you and someone who is happy and carefree? Someone who has courage, someone who has patience, someone who has love. Okay? The difference, and often someone who's successful, perhaps modestly successful. See, there's different ways of defining success. If your family respects you, if you have honor, if you live modestly, see, and people love you. For your honor, your kindness, your wisdom, your steadfastness, and so on. Well, then you're successful, you see. But the point is, the difference between you and people who, um, who are on the path to getting better is resentment and judgment. So who is it that you resent? See? Who is it that you resent? Was it your mom who put you down, made you angry? Was it your dad who wasn't there for you, failed you? See? Was it other kids who were bullies or was it kids who were teacher's pets or kids who were more popular than you? Kids who had nicer things than you or seemingly happier families than you? See? Or or if some things haven't worked out in your life and so you're full of blame, which is another form of resentment. So you blame all kinds of people. You blame other groups. See, you're always blaming someone else. Maybe even God. Okay. So just who is it that you resent? If you didn't have resentment. See, we all have ups and downs and vicissitudes in life. But Resentment doesn't help anything. You know what resentment is? It's uh, two things. First of all, it's food for the for the pride. See, you're you're a pompous pride on a wobbly throne. See, that doesn't want to face the reality of your failure in life. You prefer to think of yourself as a somehow a great person who's just been hard done by. So you resent other people for not respecting you, for not admiring you, for not worshiping you, for not giving you what you want. Okay? And because you don't have courage, and because you don't have patience, you're unable to meet the, the little vicissitudes of life with grace. See, you can't. And so what do you do? You resent them. Since you know you're going to fail, you're going to become upset, you're going to become angry. You know that's going to happen. So therefore you resent any vicissitude in life. Any little thing, even a, a noisy neighbor or a motorcycle going by, or a bill that suddenly arrives. Any of those things can make you resentful. So 
if you want to start getting control of your life, control of your emotions, and you want to start getting better instead of getting worse, okay, then you're going to have to look at something called resentment. And you're going to have to see that you're full of it, full of resentment, okay, possibly full of hate, see? So that's what you need to look at. And judgment. See, some people say, well, I don't hate anybody, or I don't resent anyone, Bob, but they're full of judgment, see? Full of judgment. For example, well, I won't give you examples. There's too, too numerous to mention. So those are the things you have to look at. Perhaps it'll help. It helps when, now that you're an adult and now you can see how you're failing with your partner, with your kids, see? Now maybe you realize See, and you see your own impatience, your own anger, your own uh, sneakiness and deceitfulness and cowardice. See, people-pleasing behavior. See, now that you see that, well, now maybe you can forgive your poor old mom and your poor old dad. When you were a kid, you judged them harshly. See, now maybe you can see you're just like them. Maybe you're worse than they, than they. See? Or you, on the surface, you're pretending not to be like them, but underneath, you're like them, see? So now you see that what they were going, maybe they were struggling. They didn't want to be like their parents who had failed them and who they resented. So the curse was passed on. See, it's passed on through resentment. Resent your parents, then what will happen is you'll hurt your kids, they'll resent you, and the curse is passed on to them, see? But you don't want that to happen. You don't want that to happen. So... Look at resentments and start to let it go. Just let it go. Now when you do, when you start to let it go, your ego is going to feel like it's being denied something or your pride, if it, if it, is, if it even is your pride. See, a soul needs some kind of support. See, a soul cannot stand on its own without some support. So the ideal thing, of course, is for the soul to be supported by God. But for most people, the soul is not supported by God. As a matter of fact, the soul is, is receiving support from the other guy, the guy with the horns, okay? Who teases you and tempts you from, from people on the outside. See, he's in other people on the outside who tease you and tempt you and challenge you, see, to build your pride. And then he's on the inside goading you on to to do something that you shouldn't do, or to cut corners, see? See? And then after you fail to have honor and love, then he, he supports you and says, well, it's not your fault, you couldn't help yourself, it's their fault, see? He makes excuses, talks to you in your mind with excuses and rationale, and see? So he becomes your support. You think it's you, you, you think that your thoughts are your own thoughts, but actually it's a false conscience from the dark side that's leading you step by step, mistake by mistake, resentment by resentment, lie by lie, to uh, a place where you don't want to, you don't want to be, okay? So, and then of course you're, 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 so it may not be you, it may be him or the spirit or whoever violated you when you were a child. Your mother who bossed you around and was cruel, or your father wasn't there, or some uncle, or some aunt, or some brother, or sister, or some bully, see? Spirit of teacher, someone who you hated, who got inside you. Now you have to look at that too, see? And so, but what I was gonna say is, the other thing that supports our ego, our pride, in its self-righteous, stance is, uh, is emotions, anger, rage, okay? Resentment, hatred. So your ego is built of, of that. False supports, wrong supports, anger, rage, okay? So if you start to let go of rage and anger, you start to let go of resentment, then you'll feel like you're being denied something. Your ego will feel like your pride will start to shrivel up. 
Okay, just like remember the wicked witch of the West who just melted into what into water or something. Remember that? I can't remember. The, but you remember the, in the Wizard of Oz. See. Well, it'll start to feel uh, terrible. It'll say it'll start to have a uh, withdrawal symptoms when you deny it. It's resentment based. See, resentment is like a little candy for your ego to support your pride. So, uh, may I recommend the meditation that I have? It's very, uh, very good. It's uh, free. I have a free version. The, the more advanced versions, like the classic meditation, has four parts. It's more elaborate. has more instruction, which could be good. See, you need some sound advice. And also um, books, e-books that go with it, which are good reads. But if you wanted to just sample, you could try the free, the easy meditation. I call it the easy meditation. It's free. It's only six minutes long. Helps you to get out of negative thoughts, negative emotions, stand back and look at them objectively. So you're not subject to them anymore. So you don't want to be subject to negative thoughts and lies and deceit, which will mislead you. See, and you don't want to be subject to emotions that will mislead you and get you to do wrong things. So the first step is to separate from them and just observe them. Okay, so if you see hate in you, then you see the hate, but you just you but you see you also see that it's wrong, and so you don't give in to it. You see anger in you. See if you see bad, wrong thoughts in you, you just see them. There they are. There's the wrong thoughts, but you don't go along with them anymore. You see what I mean? You stand back and look at them objectively, and then they dissolve away. So the meditation could be very, very helpful. Um, uh, if you're ready, see, some people are not ready. First of all, some people don't want to give up hate. They don't want to give up judgment. They don't want to give up resentment. Their whole life is built upon it. Other people are just not ready yet. They're not ready. Maybe someday they will be ready, but right now they're not ready. So won't help them. But if you're ready, then uh, the meditation could be a, a, a God sent. My name is Roland.